Hey everyone, I'm Harrison from Be Downtown. Thank you so much for joining us virtually to learn more about the Poe Bees. And I'm Ben. We are so excited to be with you for Dig In this year, and we're very excited to take you to the Bees in person as soon as we possibly can. Great. Are you doing a slow mo? No, just a Time normal. Time lapse? Just a normal. Uh, Bottom. Night vision? Wait, what? <laughs> oh, curious. I see her. Okay. She's kind of got a reddish tint. Up on her front. Thank you. For those of you that don't know, Bee Downtown installs and maintains beehives on corporate campuses to facilitate employee engagement and sustainability programming. A couple of our other partners in Raleigh include MetLife, SAS, Murphy's Naturals, North County Museum of Art, Cisco, and now Poe Health Center. We are thrilled the bees are buzzing at Poe now. Continue watching to learn more about the Poe bees and how you can help pollinators at home. We hope to see you all soon in person, but until then, take care and stay safe. What you looking for on that piece of equipment? This is an inner cover. The inner cover has a couple purposes, but I think its greatest purpose is to save or protect your other cover, which is down on the ground there. What I'm doing right now is uh, the bees will corral these little beetles. They're called small hive beetles. And uh, they can't sting them because their shells are too tough and they're too small for the bees to grab and drag out of the hive or even if they do drag them out, uh, the beetles just go right back in. So the bees corral them into the corners and just kind of pin them there. And so I just look for them and remove the, remove the beetles, help the bees do something they can't do. So I got a tough one for you. Why are honeybees in trouble and dying around the world? There's lots of reasons that the bees are not having the best of times right now. Uh, generally, we point to the, the four Ps, Marlis Spivak, pests, pesticides, which is just more generally chemicals, poor nutrition, and poor management, or just I like to say people. Um, and each of those kind of contributes. There's no one big problem. It's just lots of little problems coming together. Um, if you had to pick one, you're like, Ben, you have to pick one, I would say Varroa mites, which is one of the pests. Uh, that's our biggest problem. Uh, probably followed by pesticides or chemicals because there's a lot of stuff going on there that we just don't know. <laughs> this is a beautiful frame. Um, this side too, we got a little bit of those empty spots are were a boarded brood, um, but overall it's really, really kind of a pretty frame. With those all these brown, dark brown ones. That's not pollen. It's not honey. Those are all going to turn into baby bees. Probably fourteen hundred of them, thirteen hundred of them, and then the same over here. So this is a very healthy column so far. Seems seems to be good anyway. <laughs> Well, more of a technicist question, are bees ever really babies? A baby? Are they really babies? Uh, so they, I mean, sure, it depends when a baby is a baby. Uh, 
Here we have eggs on the outside, some larvae, the little white things there. So brood is a general term for the different stages of development that bees go through. So it's an egg for three days, six days it's a larva, and then for worker bees, another 12 days as a pupa and those brown cells we saw earlier. So are they a baby? At least when they're an egg and a larva, they're a baby. Do you see the color? I see it. I don't know if our viewers do. There's some brown, gold, brown, burnt orange maybe, or uh, muddy orange. Burnge? Burnge. There, I like that. And then some green, some grenage. Oh. Yes, technical terms. Uh, and this is actually a lot of new wax, which is great to see, especially this time of year. So we know the bees are pulling in some nectar from flowers. Uh, this time of year, it's probably goldenrods and asters. The green is from us. We feed them some sugar water with green dye. Uh, that way we know when they're pulling in nectar of their own and when it's food that we've given them. Well, so you're helping the bees. How can people at home help pollinators? on an individual level. So let's start with some of the tougher things. Planting plants. Everyone's like, plant some plants, it's so easy. It's not that easy, because um, you gotta plant the right plants. You gotta go out there and do it. You gotta keep them alive. So I just wanna acknowledge that that's a very good thing to do, but it's not like, the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, but find a list of, uh, in North Carolina, if you search Debbie Ruse, North Carolina Extension, NC State Extension. Uh, she has a wonderful list all ready for you. You can plant by season. Uh, planting trees is actually a really great thing if they're native trees. Uh, so planting things. Another big issue is habitat loss. So in a city, uh, stop cutting your lawn. Leave a little bit of leaves in one corner of the yard and leave some sticks on the ground. Because bees, native bees, use those to nest and uh, to live. So cut your lawn a little bit less. Those are two easy things. And a bee hotel. What's your favorite fact about the honeybee? My favorite fact about the honeybee. It could be technical or non-technical. Let's start. Let's start with the uh, non-technical. The non-technical. I love just seeing different colored pollens, uh, especially in the spring. You pull up. You might have an entire frame of pollen, and it's just so cool to see all the different colors. Usually oranges, browns, yellows, but you'll see blacks, whites, oranges, or I already said oranges, uh, whites, blacks, are rare, greens, purples, um, so it's just, you never know what you're going to get. You're a color guy. I do like colors. What's your technicus? My technicus facticus to do with diversity. Um, so in the bee world, much like in the human world, diversity is, is a good thing, it's an important thing, but why? In the bee world, uh, diversity means uh, different genetics, and so those different genetics bring different behaviors, different skill sets to the table, so it allows them to solve different problems. So when you have lots of different genetics, which means the queen mated with lots of different drones, they're just more robust, more healthy, um, and that is similar to like a community of humans where if you have lots of different people of different viewpoints, um, different skill sets, you can solve problems in new and unique ways. So, And to my diversity point, if you look at the bees, you got a bee with some golden brown and then some black stripes. There's a very light colored bee. Uh, it's got yellow and black strips. Uh, this bee's much darker. Uh, lots of black strips. Um, those seem to be the big differences visually seeing here.